Hi everyone. Let me first introduce myself to all of you. This is Ashnat Kothari here. I am a teacher, actuarial science educator, and a minimalist. In this video, we are going to be discussing the indicative solutions for CM2 paper A that came from IFOA in the April 2022 session. Please do keep in mind these are just the indicative solutions. In case you identify any sort of errors, be it calculation based uh, or conceptual based, do let us know through the comment section uh, of this particular video. We would take a look at that. And in case we find merit in it, we would be pushing the rectifications through our the comments section itself. So all the viewers watching out, uh, watching this video, do keep in mind to take a look at the comments section as well. In case uh, we come up with any rectifications to the solutions, we shall be pending that particular comment as well. Before starting with the discussion uh, for the solutions, let me also inform you that we would be starting with our new batches from May 8. This is relevant for IAI July 2022 session, IAI December 2022 session and IFOA September 2022 session. Classes would be held in live offline format that is at physical center in Kolkata. These classes are going to be streamed live online as well. So students from all over the world or any part of India as well can attend these. Do keep in mind that the uh, that the language which we'll be using in these classes is going to be English. So that the language shouldn't be a barrier to anyone, specifically to uh, the non-Hindi students, non-Hindi speaking students as well. Pre-recorded lectures will also be available. So just in case you miss any of the classes or you know you want to completely self-paced your course, pre-recorded lectures are available as well. So also do keep in mind that we do not intend to uh, come up with any other new live batches at this point of time. So in case you're planning to join us, do so at the earliest. In the last two years, we uh, were primarily holding classes on weekends itself, the live online classes. And the major focus on for those were basically the paper B part, wherever relevant, doubt clearing and question solving. But now we would be back to conducting the classes the way we used to do pre-COVID. So we have uh, released the schedule for the timings of the classes and we intend to take four to five classes <coughs> per paper for CM and CS series per week throughout the <coughs> batch uh, session. So we, if not all, we would be covering a significant portion of syllabus, be it the conceptual lectures, question solving, doubt clearing, mock examination, <coughs> so on. As long as you are preparing on a regular basis, you would be getting access to all the resources uh, which would ensure that you are going uh, with an extremely good preparation for your examination. Coming back to the paper, so uh, as with the you know previous uh, year sessions as well, uh, this paper students did found a, a lengthy. So again, had this been on uh, paper, you know, had we need to just write it through pen on paper, it would have been a uh, pretty much uh, soluble within three hours, 20 minutes, the entire paper, but on board, given the quantums of steps involved, the calculation involved, it did take time and, uh, you know, uh, students did struggle, but keeping in mind the pass marks, which IFOA has been keeping for CM2, uh, I think the estimated pass marks for this paper could be 60 plus minus two. There has been a bias uh, to, you know, the pass marks has been uh, 60 or 62 for CM2. So, and given that the paper was not as such difficult. So uh, in this term as well, you know, we could expect the pass marks in that particular range itself. So let's start with the first question. This is basically coming from stochastic model of interest rates. So here is a look at the tentative solutions. For part one, the values of sigma square and mu has been calculated. Part two, we need to find the probability. In part three, again, we need to find the, uh, sorry, this is basically part two. Part three must be basically the comments part, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, comment on our answer to part two. And in part four, this is the thing. Now, uh, one common mistake which i guess a lot of you might uh, you know could have made in uh, part 4 was assuming that you know this s3 follows normal distribution that is uh, you will just find the mean let's say of uh, 10000 s3 and the variance and then you standardize it that's an approximate method uh, as per my understanding you know you shouldn't be getting marks for it because we clearly have the exact distribution of s3 which is basically log normal and you should be following that protocol 
so keep that in mind if uh, you are you know just standardizing s3 assuming it to be normal that's an approximate answer you're getting you shouldn't be scoring full marks for it whether you would be awarded step marks or not uh, is on the discretion of the examiner but uh, that is something you know honestly which sh uh, shouldn't be acceptable because you are in a position to calculate the exact probabilities over here without uh, much uh, difficulty next question 2 is basically from run of triangles part 1 is defining the term loss ratio part 2 is basically uh, calculating the total claims arising from accidents in 2019 and then further what we have is we have another year of data and then again we need to find the revised claims uh, accidents from 2019 using the bf method itself and part 4 is discussing the implications so as for the numerical parts that is part 2 and 3 these are the various steps involved so it's coming out to be 1082 part 2 and part 3 is coming out to be 1843 now just do note in mind some of you might have made the mistake that instead of taking 1412 which is there you might have taken a 1406 which is coming out to be your initial liability uh okay so that uh, could have been there so this is the solution for question number 2 <laughs> next question number 3 part 1 uh, direct book work part 2 straight forward you know so overall question 3 was pretty much straight forward so let's just quickly glance through the solution of this part 2 the forward price is 80 e to the power rt part 3 you just need to go about construction of two portfolio i have mentioned as well uh, you know what these two portfolios would be having and then the steps and the way you construct with the statements is similar to that has been given in the material or even in the past years as well for similar questions in part 4 delta is coming out to be 1 gamma is 0 and beta is also 0 commentary is this is same as for share and then part 6 is oh uh, yes we could basically <laughs> next question number 4 so we have been given basically the vasicek model and what we need to do is basically apply the eto's formula to get uh, f of matlab basically the stochastic differential equation for this function f so this is what we have df is equal to del f by del t into dt so on applying basically the Taylor's two expansion formula, if you would want to say, and it's coming out to be in this form. This is the concise form. So the last line is basically being minus f within brackets a plus capital A t minus b t square by two into d t plus b z d z t. Moving forward towards the next question, that is question number five. So we have two options: option A and option B. and we need to demonstrate first part that mu and sigma is this again this is somewhat let's say using stochastic model of interest rates as well as uh, uh, in the part 4 you know when we need to compare the relative risk so you could think this to be you know a uh, measurement of investment risk chapter so it's chapter 4 and chapter 5 of cmt you know combined so we do actually get the value of mu and sigma procedure remains the same in part 2 we find the expectation and we find the variance so these are the answers and then ultimately the standard deviation which was required then for part b this is how i have described my random uh, variable something which i keep insisting on always define the random variable so this is basically the value after 15 years is what i denote from your i have given t5 which is basically the accumulation factor from time 11 to time 15 since for the first 10 years it's uh, generating a fixed interest of 4% per annum find the expectation t5 then expectation t5 square and then consequently i get variance of t5 and then i simply substitute this to get expectation of uh, t5 in part 3 we need to basically find the probability now again keep in mind a lot of you might have found the mean and variance and you know again standardize this that's again an approximate method should not fetch full marks the rather method here should be that s15 follows a log normal distribution and we would be getting the exact result Start, we are standardizing here as well but keep in mind we are standardizing a log normal distribution and not directly assuming s15 to be a normal distribution as for part b what we have is basically t5 is less than 1.04712 so if we'll just see from the random variable above this basically corresponds to the first case only in all the other cases it's uh, more than the particular given value so the probability comes out to be nothing but 0.15 only and then compare the relative risk so uh, 
simple you are just going to compare the variances the mean as well as the probability of you know being less than 775 on those lines you need to make comments question number 6 again uh, uh, this is fairly straightforward part 1 demonstrating the fair price it's direct book work i would say part 2 is just putting the values in part 1 and getting the answers so i guess i did uh, have Oh, question number six. Okay. Okay. So question six, it's not there. It's putting. I'll just uh, be checking the answer, uh, and I'll be posting it in the comments section only. Uh, it's not here right now, but I would be posting the numerical answer for part two. Part seven, utility function. Again, uh, it has been almost a trend now that all the papers would be having one question of utility function. The paper A part specifically. first part is demonstrating that the investor has both increasing absolute and relative risk aversion so these i would say are very easy marks to score could take some time to uh, perform the typing on ms word apart from that these are fairly straight forward and then part 2 is determine which option the investor should choose to maximize the expected utility and then part 3 is comment why the investor could not use uw if the initial wealth was $65000 so i have demonstrated i found what arr a r r a taken the first derivative of both of them and shown them to be uh, greater than 0 which basically means that we have an increasing era and rra in part 2 again i always prefer to define the random variable so these are my basically the wealth amount and the various options a b and c and then i find the expected utility so we see that it's coming out to be the highest uh, in the third case let me see so next uh, moving forward part 3 is comment why the investor could not use because if you are using $65000 so you will see that this particular uh, utility function first of all very important is these are in million dollars so here the values are in thousands don't forget to convert them into million dollars because if you put it in thousands only you will be getting a negative utility so that should be a self check only like when i was solving it i first of all put 50000 only then i am like i'm getting a negative utility means there is some sort of an error which has been made on my end or it could be a um, you know a, a typing error in the question as well but that is a uh, very rare and then i clearly saw that you know the investor's wealth uh, wealth is being measured in millions in this scenario so that is again one uh, i guess uh, error which a lot of you could have made over here so this is the reasoning for a non satiated investor the first derivative should be greater than 0 and this will be only the case when w is less than 1 by 12 that is it should be less than 83333 pounds or dollars should be <coughs> excuse me dollars over here i guess now the utility function uh, won't be valid when initial wealth is 65000 because it could lead to wealth which is beyond 83333 so an option b you know when uh, it's actually growing by let's say around uh, 60% or 40% then if you start with $65000 then your wealth will basically be at a point which uh, is not uh, suitable to be used for the particular utility function given finally question number 8 this is basically using the morton model first part is calculating the outstanding value of the debt so today it's basically 20 million dollar and then the continuously compounded rate of interest is 8% per annum and maturity is in 7 years interest is added to the outstanding debt to be paid at maturity and then we have various other parts so here is a quick glance at the solution of each of these parts part 1 35.01 million okay and then i am just denoting this to be l and f not is 40 again this is not required for part 1 exactly these notations would be used for the part 2 onwards and then i am <coughs> using the model calculating the values and i am getting the answer to be 10.28 million part 3 is basically the probability that uh, the bond holders would be paid in total so it comes out to be 0.81597 again depending on uh, the sort of rounding you have made to d2 you could get a slightly different answer and uh, i guess most of these should be correct unless you have made a uh, significant roundings now in part 4 if i calculate b0 it's basically f0 minus c0 and it's coming out to be 29.7 million now part 5 is commentary you know so in part 1 what we were doing was basically finding the value of the loan at time 7 whereas here this is basically the value of the loan at time 0 so it's not directly comparable as such and that is you know it should not be same because there is in fact a component of time value of money part 6 is calculating 
the transition rate and it's coming out to be 0 0.029054. So I hope you did find this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We would be released, uh, you know, over the next uh, couple of weeks, releasing the indicative solutions for paper B part as well. Do like this video and share with your peers so that uh, they could also go through the solutions and uh, make a judgment right now only uh, as to uh, how they should be expecting the results for CM2. Thank you, everyone.